Hey there guys, thanks for clicking on and tuning in to today's episode of this Manchester United story with me, Mr Cudley. What are we bringing you in today's episode? Well, it's the 2nd of October, that means we have transfer news. The transfer window is closed, we will bring you right up to date with everything that's gone on in and out of the club as far. We will also have Carabao Cup news. So we've just dumped out a Premier League side to then be drawn against another Premier League side. Find out who that one is. Also, we have Premier League updates for you. And whilst we're on the subject of updates, we have Champions League updates. We have been drawn, people. We have been drawn in Group A with three other teams. Join and stay with me to find out who them three teams are. And also, what you don't want to miss is a 9-1 thrashing we delivered upon someone. Find out who it is next. Hey guys, and thanks for tuning in. Um, so we are just going to wrap up a few things quite early on. Um, Carabao Cup. Uh, we played, we got drawn against Leicester City in the last round. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to um, deny Leicester and come away, I think it was a 2-1 victory. So we've now been given a home draw, as you can see, guys, against West Bromwich Albion. So we're doing all right in the cup. We're not doing too bad. Considering we're in six sort of leagues or events this season, we're doing all right to still be in the Carabao Cup. So that's a bonus as far as I'm concerned because I'm not really trying to... To win the Carabao Cup, however, if it if it comes our way, we'll take it with both arms, uh, gladly. But I'm not putting teams out that are, you know I would you know if I'm playing a Carabao Cup on a on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday and we've got a game on a Saturday that's an important game, then I'm going to put a weak side out. If we've got the ability to put a decent side out, then we will do. If we haven't, then I'll just throw some kids in or some people that need a bit of game time. So that's my idea with the Carabao Cup. So. Moving on from the Carabao Cup, we have had um, a a draw. The draw has been made for group stages for the Champions League. Um, we have played a few games, or I think one game, sorry, in the Champions League. And the draw, people, will be as follows. So this is the group stage so far, and we are top. Uh, we are... Um, so we've got her for Berlin, we've got Roma, and we've got Sporting. So, so far we have played uh, Herfer, which we got a 1-1 draw over Old Trafford. Um, and then we played Sporting at home again, and we had a 2-0 victory, uh, which leaves us with a game coming up, which is going to be included in today's episode against AS Roma. So there's one game. Are we playing two or three games this episode? We are playing two games this episode. Um, Southampton in the Premier League and Roma, as you've just heard, in the Champions League. And talking of Premier League, guys, let's whip over there now and just show you how we're doing in the league. Probably not as well as you guys are anticipating. So here we are. We are at the top of the Premier League. Uh, we are one point clear. Uh, I'm smiling and laughing because the teams directly below us, um, all the teams apart from West Ham... Um, <laughs> have played seven games so we sit at the top but we probably won't be sitting pretty after the next round of fixtures that probably won't include us um so uh, unfortunately we sit at the top of the tree right now but probably within a week's time we're probably going to be around sixth or seventh again maybe a little bit lower it just depends uh well, no we can't go lower sorry uh, apologies fifth or around fifth spot so uh chelsea were top of the tree for about well, uh, two or three weeks. Um, then Liverpool came out of nowhere, and then so did we. We were lurking seventh or eighth for a few weeks, struggling, couldn't find form, but then we hit some form. And to prove we've hit a bit of form, we are going to go over now and look at the schedule of games played so far and look out for a 9-1 scoreline, people. 9-1. That's correct. I'm not mixing my words. 9-1. 9-1. Nine, right, so... After the AC Milan game that you saw us, um, I believe we lost on penalties, which was down here in the UEFA Super Cup. Wrong friendly. Um, we went on to have a 2-0 victory against Spurs. 
mixed bag all this really um so you can see why we're not sitting at the top of the tree um with more points so uh, a victory against spurs a 4-0 defeat against Manchester City. Not great getting beat by such a heavy scoreline. Certainly from your neighbours. Um, noisy neighbours might have had. Then we flipped that 4-0 on its head. And we had a 4-0 victory against Fulham. Uh, followed by a sort of 3-3 draw against Everton. was was so annoying. Um, we were freeing a lot, guys, as you can see. By, what, half-time? 13, 15 and 19. So 3-0 at half-time. And to only come away with a draw was quite dissatisfying, really. Uh, Everton did score four. Luckily for us, it was chalked off for an offside, which was genuinely an offside. So, uh, yeah, once again, uh, free free draw. Then we played Herfer, as you've heard before. We had a 1-1 draw with them at home. Uh, then we had another home game against the mighty Leeds, the rivalry, as we all know, between Manchester United and Leeds United. Um, wasn't simmered in any way, shape or form. Uh, so only coming away with a point there. Uh, then we had the Carabao Cup third round game against Leicester that I told you about. We victorious Fernandez and Martial getting on the score sheets. Uh, then we had a full one win against Brentford. Uh, Martial, Greenwood, Luke Shaw on the score sheet. And Edison Cavani uh, sporting. Then we had a 2-0 victory over them with Fernandez. It's a lot of Fernandez again. So I think we we may well have found. Um, his well he's finding his form so i'm really happy about that uh he struggled last season um so then we've just had a 9-1 victory that's correct guys it's the one we've been looking out for 9-1 against west ham united how it happened i have no idea west ham were there's no other words for it piss poor i actually don't think we were that good uh but they were piss poor and as an added little bonus to guys I think I'm going to show you all the goals for this game. Uh, Martial getting four. Cavani getting a goal. Uh, Odegaard getting a goal. Pereira getting a goal. The list goes on. The list is endless. The list, as they said in Top Gun, is distinguished. Put out. We've got to stop there. I think I should show you some goals. Let's show you the 9-1. Let's, let's have a look. Let's do the goals, shall we? Let me bore you with the goals. I probably won't do much commentating. I'll just show you in all its glory. I mean, that was just fantastic football. The football we have started to play in the last three games has been amazing. It really has been amazing. And of course, since we started playing our game a little bit more and reverting back to a system that we know, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, we have uh, been dominating games and scoring for fun. So... Great response. I mean, the football has just been amazing. It really has. I mean, Martial really shouldn't be getting the rebound there, but it just shows how poor and weak um, West Ham's defence was to sort of break. I mean, we're just getting behind at any given opportunity. We're just getting behind. It's it's too easy. Round the back. I mean, Odegaard, a sweet left-footed shot right in the bottom corner. Uh, and then West Ham go and spoil the party by doing this, don't they? Ru I mean, ruined it. Old Jared Bowen, eh? Ah, oh, sweet as. I mean, it just seemed a bit too, a bit too simple, really, for my liking. Back post, Harry Maguire on the score sheet, nods it in for nine. So that was the nine-one, and that brings us up to date with where we actually are. So. Um, we've seen the league, we've seen all this. Um, transfers, no more business we've done. Uh, there's been a few loans gone out. Um, I'm just going to take you over there now and we'll, we'll just have a little delve into the loans. Bear with me on this one. It might take me a few, a few minutes to find where we need to be, but we'll, we'll have a look that's gone out. So here we go. Um, so we talked, so finally... We haven't sold him, but Jones, Phil Jones, has gone to, De yeah, he's gone to Alves. He's gone out on loan. Uh, I don't think there was a clause for a mandatory fee. Um, let me just check. Optional future fee of four and a half million. So if they get him for that, it's a bit of a steal. But it's also got his hundred and ten grand week 
wages off the books, which will be good. Uh, Dalek's got a PSV on a loan. Again, I'm pretty certain. Uh, I can't remember, so I have to jiggle my brain. There's no future fee. There's no mandatory future fee. He's on loan for the season. Jesse Lingard's gone out to West Ham. Um, I think I tried to get a future fee for this guy, but um, not... I pressed the wrong one. Not sure if we managed to do that. I don't Again, I don't think we did. Um, no, it's a bit... It's a bit annoying that we didn't manage to do that. Uh, Elanga has gone out on loan to Doncaster. We needed we needed four players. Well, we, we put four players out to on the development list to go and get some football. And uh, hopefully this guy's gone and he's going to get what he needs and earns earns out of football what he needs to. So this guy, Tiedem Mengi, Tiedem, Tiedem, uh, he's gone on loan to Derby. Uh, he was wanted by maybe about 15, 17 clubs. Uh, he chose Derby in the end because they've promised him the amount of time and um, promised him the position he's going to play. So FM doing its utmost to surprise us. I'm sure we'll get inundated with emails off our uh, chairman or whoever it's going to be to say he's not playing his preferred position. He's not playing enough football. It's going to happen. We know it's going to happen, but at least they're getting game day experience which is what we want them to do we want them to feel the butterflies we want them to feel nervous we want them to feel like they're an important part of another team that they've gone to so that they can sort of learn the job on the job training so that's what we've done as far as transfers which is loans out i'm afraid nothing coming in um finances we'll quickly go through the finances now nice and healthy 174 million in the bank uh, we've got 10 million transfer budget left to spend. We are currently spending pretty much just a tad bit over on the wages, but by what 20 grand. Uh, in the scheme of things, it's not a big deal, so um, they haven't really flagged anything up for that so far. Right, so moving on, I think we need to move on now and go and play our first game of this episode which I do believe is Southampton. Wouldn't it have been nice to have scored nine past Southampton rather than West Ham? More more in touch with what's happening in the real world, isn't it, really? Um, would have been nice. Probably not going to happen. You'll probably find we'll lose 2-0 now to Southampton. But, you know, let's start as we mean to go on. I'm going to tell the boys to get into it. So we are going to head straight over. We've had, what, a 14-day 14, a 14 break, so we've had a two-week break. Um, since the last game, we are going to go over and play Southampton now. So we will see you guys over at the tactics page, ready for our team talk, our team selection, and hopefully our beating against Southampton. So come and join me, guys. Tactics page, one minute. Tactics page, we are here. So if you're enjoying the content so far of this save and you want to see some more, Give it a thumbs up or if you want to subscribe to the channel, bottom right of your screen right now, quickly have a look. Take your eyes off this and we'll pause. Press subscribe, join the gang and you can watch the rest of the content that we make that I think is good and enjoyable. Right, so we are sticking with the same side that gave us the 9-1 victory over Southampton and that team is as follows. So De Gea has come back in goal. Uh, Wan-Bissaka was right back. Shaw went to left back. Maguire and Skriniar are the centre-half pairing that we've chosen. We've got Bentaku in the deep line playmaker with Odegaard as the making up the second player in midfield. The only change we are making will be Pereira when Fernandez. Sorry, Fernandez in for Pereira. Um, Edouard will start on the right, Martial is going to start on the left, and Cavani will start up front. <coughs> so we need to put in Bruno Fernandes. There we go. So that is the team we are going to play. Um, it is hard that we are leaving out so many quality players. I'm actually going to put um, Daniel James out, and I'm going to put Paul Pogba in. Um, he can play a number of positions there. So that's what we're going with. Um, you know, you need to keep our fingers crossed. We just want to keep our surge going um, and keep winning. This is the team we're going to play for this um, particular game. So let's get straight on and crack on with this. And hopefully another three points will be sealed in the bag. Kickoff time is upon us and... 
Uh, yep, Southampton's team, they're playing the one man up front. So uh, we're going to kick off with this um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, pull out a, de a decent result. Uh, funny, James Ward-Prowse was a player I looked at, a um, nice young player, um, with bags and bags of potential, but just I, I didn't sign him in the end. I went for the two players that we currently got, Skriniar and Odegaard. Odegaard has just made so much difference to this side, sort of um, dictating the game, and lovely short little passes that he makes. Uh, don't seem very effective, but they always end up to be very effective, so we're quite lucky in that respect. We've got some good, good players well, that said, well, 10 minutes in, we're 1-0 down, uh, counter-attack by Southampton, uh, small bonus, so obviously that's what they're going to be about today, they're going to be all about the counter, it's, it's this header, I mean, he gets a really, really good start on the jump, uh, yeah, deserved, deserved, count. well, deserved counter-attacking goal, not, not fully deserved in terms of possession, um, so nevertheless we're 1-0 down we need to see a reaction um, it's how we deal with things like this and when we've gone behind in other games this season we have failed to um, win the games in the past so this is where I feel we lost the league last time and I think as Danny Ings goes through I think we need to rectify that to maybe have a chance of winning the league so this is where we need to see what steel we've got in the squad. and see. I mean, we are losing everything. We're playing so high up that pitch. Oh, right. I've got to make a change, viewers. I've got to make a change. We are being absolutely destroyed. I mean, all right, we're not going to play that. We're just going to... I'm going to take... The, I'm not playing offside trap. Take it off. Uh, we are going to come a tad bit deeper because that's, that's three times they've gotten in. So really, we're, we're fortunate that they've only scored the one. Ward-Prowse with the corner. De Gea comes for it. LNEC. Oh, OK. So it comes to nothing. All right. We really need to get a hold of this ball. Um, I mean, they are just dictating in every department, everywhere. They're just... Sandro's... Is that the Sandro that was on loan at Everton? Uh, from... Was he somewhere like Real Madrid or Barcelona he was on loan from? Um, condition of Bentec is not great, so I think we're going to make a defensive change. Oh, I might, maybe. I mean, we're losing the ball in midfield. Maybe we're losing it through sort of um, brute force. If that's the case, then we'd need someone like a Pogba to come on. Uh, if we're just losing it purely based on defensive errors. Odegaard plays Cavani in 1-1 on the stroke of half-time. Uh, never saw it coming, guys, if I'm being honest. Didn't see that goal coming. Uh, so bring me back. I was thinking Pogba may need to come on uh, if we are struggling. If it's defensive errors we were struggling at, uh, McTominay was coming on. But I think as it stands, uh, we will put on Paul Pogba at half-time. Um, Benteke really is struggling he's obviously he's only performing on a 6.9 Shaw and De Gea and Cavani are all having a good game so we are going to go over to uh, the tactics page of the um, for the half time changes and we are in fact going to put on Paul Pogba for ben Benteke uh, I'm probably going to change his role and go a little bit more attacking we're going to go as a uh, no, he's gonna. Put, we're gonna keep him on a DLP. We're just gonna put him on a support duty. Get a little bit uh, more in touch with Odegaard. Um, I don't really think I'm gonna change much more. But I've got to watch Skriniar, Millian Skriniar. Uh, it's starting to sort of struggle. Uh, so maybe Lindelof can come on after 20, 25 minutes. Uh, Fernandez. He's he seems motivated. He's playing okay. He's on a condition star uh, heart number of three so potentially we could bring on Andreas Pereira in his position or move Odegaard up and bring McTominay in either way we've got some options uh, we're going to go with what we've got so far and hopefully we can turn this game right round <clears throat> so team talk's been done and we are good to go um, I am going to demand more because I feel we should be getting more alright yes we're away uh, one clear-cut chance we've had in the game, which led to the goal. 
However, Ward Prowse crosses the ball. Just, we've just got to be careful. We're giving free kicks away. We're giving too much possession away. We just can't sort of nail down possession. So Shaw with the throw. Poor throw out to Pogba. Odegaard into Fernandez. Back to Odegaard. Great ball out wide to wan -Bissaka. Crosses. Fernandez. It's 2-1, people. The blink of an eye, we go 2-1 up. Shouldn't really be 2-1 up in this game. Uh, we are riding some luck today, people. Uh, I thought Odegaard was actually going to pull the trigger there, but um, unselfishly, he goes out wide. Fernand I mean, goalie should be claiming that if I'm being really critical, but, you know, I'm happy he didn't. Um, so we've got an issue with a few players with conditioning, Odegaard being one of them, so we're just going to pause momentarily, and we are going to make a change and go more defensive. Uh, I'm going to put um, Tom and Aon, I'm going to put, I'm going to swap Pogba and McTominay around. Um, is there anything else I need to do? Fernandez really, really struggling. Uh, we're going to put Pereira on. Fernandez has done his part, got his goal, um, got an assist. So let's move on with that. Uh, maybe we well. So we're playing balanced. As I say, maybe we could play a little bit more balanced, but we are balanced. I actually thought we were playing positive, uh, which will probably explain why we haven't ventured forward too much. So Andreas Pereira with a corner. Edward header. Just goes over. Uh, he's actually been quite impressive for me. He's, he seems to have done all right. Uh, he's sort of settled in the team really, really well, which I'm happy about. Uh, so we're just coming to the end. 93 minutes, full time. Another victory. Um, undeserved, in my honest opinion. Tell me what you think, people. If you're watching, uh, comments, please leave. Did we deserve the victory? Uh, in my eyes, we didn't. I only saw what you saw. Nothing's been edited. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, personally, I thought we were... All right, the stats do show 50-50. They show 90, 92 percent pass completion uh, for us against 86. But was that generally always going forward? You'll probably find it was side to side or going backwards. Uh, 1.78 xg for us to their 1.71. 13 shots, nine on target for us. 17 for them, six on target. So um, I, I think the stats don't exactly show what the game was there, really, if I'm being perfectly honest. Nevertheless, we'll move on. We'll take it. It's three points in the bag. Um, where does that leave us after that game? Uh, I'm going to say a good win. We've done well to turn that around from a one deficit. We're not going to answer that. That's something I don't do. So after playing nine games, bearing in mind Leicester have played two less than us, uh, that could put them on 21 um again we could be two points behind man city at the end of play um so we're going to be there thereabouts again uh whether we're going to be able to win the league this season again and not well i say again we didn't win it last but whether we can win it this season or not is to be seen um still think we need one more Maybe two more players through the door, but I'm not going to buy people just for the sake of buying them. They've got to be the right player. I am looking. I am scouting. I'm scouting for a right-sided player because I really want Edward to start up top. However, Cavani sort of earned his place. And Edward's playing all right on the right. Um, I'm a little bit unsure. So, again, this is where comments could come in from the viewers. I'm unsure as to what to do with Greenwood. Uh, I have seen plenty of Man United saves that people have done over the last sort of four or five months where... Um, they've started Greenwood up front on his uh, up top on a um, similar system to what I'm playing. Seems to do all right, but he just seems a bit demanding for me. What I mean by that is he keeps asking me for contracts. He deserves this. He deserves that. He's not a regular in my team. So, um, do I? Do you think I should play him? If so, let me know your stats from using him in your games. Uh, keep us posted, and we can have a look and maybe. Take some of your advice on board. Maybe put a Greenwood up front, Edward on the right. I don't know. Maybe I could save myself a bit of dollar, a bit of cash if I utilise Greenwood more in the team. Right, so with that said, we've seen the league. We have a Champions League game against AS Roma. Don't miss it. See you on the tactics page. Change of personnel for this game as we have four games coming up in the next 10, game, 10 days. Um, 10 games? So, 10 days. So, just to confirm, we've changed personnel. We have four games. That's four. Four games in the next 10 days. English. Queens. Right. So, we've made a few changes. Um, 
sort of, I'm not going to say we've been forced to, I could play the same sort of side, but um, we, we've got a big run in, and so we've got a Champions League game, followed by a Premier League game, followed then by the fourth round of the Carabao, followed then by Premier League once again, so all in 10 days. Uh, we're going to go through rotation of players coming up. So um, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put Dean Henderson in goal uh, for this one right now. Uh, it's a minor change. Um, I think Donny van der Beek. I mean, again, guys, your comments would help. Uh, do I sell him? Do I use him? Is he a good squad player? Or do I, in fact, play him? Uh, will he do better than um, an Odegaard, a Pereira, a Fernandez? If he does... I mean, I'm not going to know until I try, but I'm too scared to try him because I just don't think he will. Um, so this would have been an ideal game that Donny van der Beek could have played in the um, in the first 11. He's not even making the bench, I think. The writing, personally, for me, is on the wall, but can you, the viewers, convince me to keep him? Uh, let's have a look. Also, Eric Ballet, I'm thinking of letting him go because I'm going to use Andrea Papetti. Uh, we all know about this guy. Um, he is a absolute superstar in the making if we can play him so um he will be playing or starting should we say against burnley next so next time we come to the um well the next episode the next time we come to you guys he may be almost a regular uh because i mean Maguire, yes he's good don't get me wrong but uh, I don't see Maguire's long-term future at Man United if I'm in charge. That's my personal opinion. So let's concentrate more on this game. So uh, players that you will recognise that haven't made the squad will be Aaron Wan-Bissaka, uh, Paul Pogba, Lindelof. So instead we've gone for De Gea on the bench, Tellez, Fernandez, Cavani, Tuanzabi, Odegaard and Marcus Rashford. He's just come back from an injury, so I felt it was right to include him in the squad uh, for the, today's game. Give him a little run around, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on how the game goes. So without further ado, people, um, let's do this. AS Roma at Roma. Let's get a result. Right, kickoff is upon us. So let's do this. A result, please, boys. I'll take a draw. Uh, so, uh, just had a look um, briefly whilst uh, running through the game at the... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll just pause for a second while they score. Oh, no, maybe they did they score? I mean, you can't tell. Uh, at the league, so uh, games are all up to date, bar a few of them that have only played eight to my nine. <clears throat> we are still top of the league, people. We are one point above and in front of Liverpool, who have played the same amount of games as us now, so they've... Uh, they lost one and drew one. So that's really helped. That's a bad ball from Eduardo. I thought he may have switched to play a bit better than that. So we have gone with the more cautious approach. Because, uh, yep, that's something Man United tend to do. They go cautious. Anyway, Martial with the ball. Uh, Edward Greenwood on his left foot. Martial shoots. Oh, he's put it wide. He's gone wide. I can't believe it. So in terms of possession, Roma dominating. In terms of um, goals, ch chances created, uh, we are just pipping it in front. So I'm going to say it's an even game. Um, it It's as even as it can be, I suppose, this early on. Sure, you should have had that. I think he bought. Looked like he bottled out of that one. And they're passing the ball around quite well. I thought he was going to nick it then. Ah, I can smell a goal. I can smell a goal. I could smell it. You get used to f um, f football manager twenty one. You know when a goal is probably going to come. I mean, to be fair, if I if my team made that many short passes in and around quite technically, then I'd expect a goal from that. To be fair. And yeah, look, it deserved thoroughly. Uh, be a shame if we don't reply. Right, so I'm actually going to say I'm, I'm not happy with... Show me something else in the second half. That's what I want. I want to see something else in the second half. 
Edward's got a chance to shine. He's gone up top. He's been put in his favourite position. Uh, no reason why he can't do something. However, he's got a angry face, so he's not really happy. Which does mean, to me, I'm going to make some changes. And the changes I'm going to make, viewers, is I'm going to bring the experienced Edison Cavani on. Played a bag full of Champions League games. Uh, Fernandez needs to come on so you can see what this is about. It's a little bit more attacking. Um, and I'm going to take Martial off and give Rashford a run out. So we've made three changes. This needs to work. I'm just going to give him a little shout and I'm going to demand more. So he seemed reasonably happy and then he speaks and then Fernandez has got, yeah, not happy. Oh, is that a penalty? Oh, he's looking on the TV. Was that a penalty? Interest. Just in case it is, I'm getting ready to change player. I thought that was a penalty. Being biased, yes, there is, but I did think it was a penalty. I thought we were fouled in, clearly in the box. Mr. Ref. Yo, winding me right up. That was a, that was a penalty all day long. Hang on, wait, wait there a minute. Sorry, I've just got a phone call coming through. Hello? All right, Stevie, how's it going? Yeah, hang on. Stevie Wonder, mate, just got to take this call. Yeah. Oh, you saw it, did you? Brilliant, yeah. Well, it was a definite penalty, mate. All day long. Yeah, okay, brilliant. What, well, you're, you're calling? But, all right, yeah, cheers. Thanks, Steve. Bye. What? Sorry, was you thinking he called me about that? No, he just called to tell me he loves me. Right, we have suffered our first defeat of the Champions League campaign against Roma. Um, not the best way to end an episode, but we have to. We've got to take it on the chin uh, and move along. Let's just have a look before we go any further with how it makes the table look currently. So it's put us in second position. Uh, and there's three more games to go and we go round and round again. So I'm confident we can prevail in the league. I'm confident we can prevail in the Champions League this group stage. Uh, I'm reasonably confident we can get through the Carabao Cup. Uh, but guys, time is going to tell. And then we have the FA Cup starting in the next few months which again adds more games to our current very very busy busy schedule um so a good rotation will be required if we are to win three or four of the available trophies to us uh, but we're going to keep going through i'll quickly show you the premier league now um before we end so this is how the premier league looks right now nine games played 22 points we are sorry 20 points we are second in the league just two points now behind man city who obviously won their game in hand uh liverpool on 19 points so it's looking fairly good for us however leicester have a game in hand if they were to win their game in hand that would put them on 19 it would put them behind liverpool on goal difference so there will be a scrap for second and third place as we speak so with all that said with all this going on we are gonna go and make play play loads more games come back and make some more history in the making with this manchester united save and of course me mr goodley guys if you're still watching and you're still tuned in and you give me a thumbs up you give comments and you like the content i'm really really happy for you i'm, I'm chuffed that you're enjoying the save uh, thumbs up, subscribe, don't forget, bottom right hand corner. I'm going to keep keep doing it until you all do it. How about that? So all the subscriptions I get, it just helps me with my channel, helps it progress, and it will make me deliver better material for you guys to watch. So with all that said, it's time for me to bow out for this episode. So guys, from me, Mr. Cudley, it's over and out. And we will see you for episode 10. Ah, fucking Stevie Wonder called me again.